we're gonna test this car's capabilities. We're gonna see, can it climb this hill? The answer, oh heck yes it can. The real question is, what happens when it lands? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beam&G Drive, and today, we're going to be taking a look at the Alpha version 0.23 update. And from the menus, you can already see some of the new things. First off, if we go to the scenarios, there are a handful of new scenarios, one of which takes place here. So where the heck is that? Well, that is grid map V2. The old grid map is gone. It's been replaced by this new V2 version. So let's go ahead and check this out. And while this loads up, let me tell you about Opera GX, which is the sponsor for this video. So Opera GX is the first web browser made for gamers. What does that actually mean? It means it has unique features like the GX control panel. Here, you can limit the resources that are available to the web browser. So if you're uploading a video to YouTube, your ping is probably gonna spike. With the click of the button, you can free up some bandwidth for the game so your ping will go back to normal. You can also limit the amount of RAM and CPU used. So if you're doing something important in the web browser but it's slowing down your game, you can go ahead and just churn it off without actually churning it off to make as much resources available to the game as possible. Next, you have the GX player, which allows you to control your music from here, or you can open up the sidebar and have full control over what song is playing right there, built into the web browser. And it supports Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube Music. And also, if you're watching a video and listening to music at the same time, it'll automatically stop the music so you can hear what's happening in the video on the web browser, like over here on the YBR channel. It also works with the most popular chat programs like Facebook Messenger, Discord, WhatsApp, and more. So I use Discord and I have a message. You can tell because there's a little red dot and it's just some idiot who is pinging me in spam. Why do I allow pings in spam? I don't know. It's just the way things are. It also integrates with Twitch. So the second somebody goes live on Twitch, like YBR, follow YBR on Twitch, that's me, follow me on Twitch, you would get a notification right here. It's also very easy to customize. So if you don't like the red theme here, well, you just go to the menu and you can get ultraviolet so then everything becomes purple. Or if that's not your color, well, there's going to be something here that you'll like. Like who doesn't like a good vaporwave color scheme? It's a classic. If you're still not convinced, it's very easy to try out the web browser yourself. All you need to do is install it, then you can go and import your bookmarks and settings from whatever web browser you use, and it'll feel just like home. There's a link in the description, go and download it, try it out, and tell me if it makes any difference in the games you play. Seriously, try it out. If it wasn't for their sponsorship, this video would never exist. And here we are in the all new grid map, but you may be a little distracted because we're also in the all new Ibishu Wigeon. It's like an Ibishu Pigeon, but better in every way you can possibly imagine. It really makes me think, what if they had an Ibishu Pigeon concept car, and then they just straight up went into production with it, so it looks like an awesome retro concept car. And check out the performance on this thing. We're going 100 miles per hour already. Although to be fair, this is the drag version. This is the fastest Wigeon there is, but still, 140 miles per hour as we fly into the air a massive amount where are we gonna land i'm not really sure but first i am legally required to remind you guys to like comment subscribe and click the bell now let's go and nail the landing well that's one way to land it that's how you land it to have no driving capabilities whatsoever just have a little bit of damage at the front though for how far we are flying. I expected quite a bit more. And around the rear, nothing looks too bad, which means you didn't get to see how cool the roof is. So let me get a more ordinary version that doesn't have the roll cage so you can really admire the way this vehicle works. So we're gonna get the LX Sprint. And one thing that you might notice about the LX Sprint is this one actually has four wheels instead of three. Same goes for the Pigeon. There are now four wheeled versions of the Pigeon by default. Funny thing is, there are like at least two or three mods out there that added four wheels to the Pigeon, but now it's finally official. So what I want to do is just show you the performance of the normal version. You see nothing spectacular here. It can drive some, but, you know, it's not going to do anything amazing. The important thing, though, is can we crash it? The answer is yes, and we got the roof damage, which is what I was looking for. So you can see a little bit of what I wanted to show you, but I can just pull it a little bit to make it a little more obvious. There we go. So look at this canopy piece. It's connected at the front and can like pop open like that if you pull it and bend it a lot. Yeah, it's not exactly supposed to pop open that far, but you know what? That's okay. We also have the doors, which you can open up with your iron pulling hands. And at this point, you have completely ruined the vehicle. Why well, yeah, that's not how averages work. I don't care. That's how they work in my brain. And as we've driven through these, you notice it's divided up into a bunch of small sections to test the off-roading. And they have little logos in front of most of them. 
And those logos tell you how difficult it is. So the more filled it is, the harder it is. So right to our right, that's about half difficulty. And then straight ahead, that thing is like maximum difficulty. This is as hard as it gets. But we got the Rock Racer. We're going to do it. We aren't going to be scared of no difficult off-roading section, even if I probably should be. Oh, no. Don't you fall off. That was actually very close. But just a quick fix and keep on going. Oh, man. This Rock Racer really is an excellent off-road vehicle. Any other vehicle... It's going to struggle going through here quite a bit, but this thing has so much suspension travel. These big knobby tires just absorb the impacts. It does great-ish. Well, we almost made it. Then the truck was like, hey, what if upside down? YBR was like, no, but truck didn't care. And we're going to fall off the edge sideways. That's okay, because the next thing we're going to take a look at is directly behind us. Boom. This is the big mountain. And there are many different ways you can get up to the top. It's just a matter of choosing which way you think is best. For example, I'm choosing the straightest path that I possibly see. And if we really wanted to get to the top, we would have to do a full 180. We only did a 90 degree corner. So we're actually going back down to the ground because I'm not going to completely climb this thing just yet. There is a scenario that involves climbing it, which I will definitely be doing in the future though. But now it's time to go to another zone. Because there are so many new things at Gridmap, it's crazy. And we are heading over to the zone that I think you guys are going to like the most. It is the Destruction Zone. But there are also things that aren't in the zones that you can play around with. Like there's this little jumping thing here you can do. So let's see if the truck can do it. Nice. And floor it. That was not floor it. It downshifted and upshifted at the wrong times and it didn't accelerate at all. But that's okay because the truck still drives. So we can go into the Destruction Zone and see... What happens when we crash into this bar? Ooh, it don't fit. Rear drive shaft broken. Can we go anywhere with a front wheel drive version? Yes, we can. This is my front wheel drive truck. What are we going to crash into? Whatever is directly behind us at surprisingly good speeds. 50 miles per hour. Bam. We go forward. Ah, uh, the wheel is stuck. All right, so that's it for the truck. But I have... A really dumb idea that we must test at least as far as I'm concerned we must test it I want to see what happens if you get the low rider version of the blue buck and go under that thing will it fit or will it crash we're gonna find out but first we gotta do a little burnout because yeah low riders don't have that great attraction sometimes all right so here we go three two one how low can you go can you go this low? Oh, it clears it perfectly. See, that's why lowriders are very practical vehicles. So let's bring the lowrider back. And we're going to crash into the object right next to the limbo bar. And this one, we can't avoid. It's going to crush the car no matter what. The question is, will it survive the big crush? Splat. Rear drive shaft broken. Wow, I didn't think it would do that much damage, but apparently it has done quite a bit. Can we even pull the car out? Well, there's the bumper. That's not the car, though. Come on, car. More strength. There's the car shooting out. And look at that beautiful wedge shape. It looks like a sports car now. Not really, but we did destroy it pretty well. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. But what if we do something really big? We're going to do the hero version of the bus, and we're going to see, does it even fit into there? First, we got to line it up nice and pretty like. Couldn't line it up with the other car because he was broken. All right, back it up a bit, and we are good to go. So take off, and now. I was going to do a countdown, but you know what? Now. Go. Go, bus, go. Do you fit? No, you don't. What will happen? This. Woo. Yeah, the car did a lot better than the bus. Although, technically, the bus could still accelerate because he's rear-engined. The car, well, the engine was in the front, so it broke the drive shafts. Quite a bit of damage there. That is beautiful. And we'll go ahead and bring the bus back over here. And then just keep swapping cars and crashing them. So let's do the Vavas race. Because we want fast cars so we can have fast collisions, right? And fast Vavas. Look at this. 60 miles per hour, just like that. And then, bam. That's like a small overlap crash test almost. And it did great. Probably because it has a roll cage. Roll cages are amazing. Can you drive it all? Nope. You are done. Again, change cars real fast. ETK K-Series track day. 
Maybe next time we won't get one with a roll cage. Oh wait, no, track day doesn't have a roll cage. Perfect! I couldn't remember for sure. So here we go. Crash test. That is a crash. We tested it. I have confirmed, yes, that is what a car does when it crashes. And it uh, is once again immobilized. These things are really good for crash testing, man. You crash once and the car's like, yeah, I'm done, dude. All right, can it fit under the bar? It's a pretty low to the ground car, but it's not a low rider. So let's see. Ooh, ooh, it almost made it. And then it didn't. It got grabbed and looped around and just completely annihilated. Engine broken, drive shaft broken. Oil pan damage, like everything is completely busted and what a crazy looking crash. Let's see if we can uh, get a better look at that because the pole's a little bit in the way. So we'll reload it and then try to get it onto its wheels. There we go. Look at that. It looks like it's like some futuristic car that has like the glass cockpit that completely surrounds the driver, but it's not. It's an ETK that just has been crashed in a really unusual way. That was a nice one. All right, next up, Eeny Meeny Miny 800 series. And again, gotta go fast. Eventually, we might do a slow one. So the problem is, if we pick a slow one, that just means we have to drive from a farther distance. When you pick the fast ones, look, boom, we're up to speed. Let's go. I'm gonna fit in between the two poles perfectly. And by perfectly, I mean I'm gonna crash into both of them at the same time-ish. There we go. Oh, it almost fits. I think not even a pigeon could fit through there, though. That is pretty small. And that is another car which has been completely destroyed. Both front and rear drive shafts are gone. It worked great though, so why don't we do this car one more time. Make sure we don't crash immediately. And then look at this big, big jump. We are going to fly into the big, big jump and see what happens. So whoop, there we go. Almost like a half pipe, but not exactly. But I stuck the landing. And we still have rear wheel drive capabilities, so we can drive a bit. It really is just a bit though. This is not good driving. So there, impact detected, stopping car, taking a look at damage, resetting car and swapping car out. How about let's get a normal-ish car. We're gonna get the abyss you pass them up. We get the fastest one we can possibly get, which isn't that fast, but it's something. And then here, we're going to hit those little balls that are sticking out of the floor and watch it pop us into the air. So you got a big one and a small one. And you know me, I like it big. So we're going to do it big. Beautiful flight. Unfortunately, yeah, it completely broke the car and flipped it over. This car looks so happy, even though he's upside down, doesn't he? He just has that happy face. Or maybe it's actually a frown, but it's upside down, so it looks happy. I don't know. Anyways, there's the car, reset it, and then let's do another crash test in another object, because there are so many things here. Like, I didn't do all the off-roading stuff, so we're not going to do all the crash testing stuff, but we're going to do a good amount. Like, look at this jump. Is this the right speed? I don't know. Let's find out. Yes, it was. Or, it was at least close. We made it into the tube, and do we have a car that can drive a little bit? Yes, we do. The front left half shaft is broken, so it's barely going to drive. It's going to drive enough to get out of there and crash it one more time to destroy the exhaust. So it now revs loud. Unfortunately, he's not going to go onto his wheels. He's tired, and he's going to go ahead and take a nap. So, there's the Pessima. We're done with him. We're going to go on to, how about the track day version of the 200BX? And here... We actually need a fast car because I want to do some of these big old ramps over here. Well, more specifically, I want to do the big ramp. And to do that, it's nice to have a car that's fast. So here we go. Flooring it from here. Going to be going about 70 miles per hour at entry to the ramp. And then exiting also at 70 miles per hour with a huge flight. Which means you're going to get some huge destruction. Exhaust damage, engine damage, rear drive shaft broken. This thing is done, but it didn't. It didn't last long, but really now none of the cars have lasted long in the destruction zone. So let's go ahead and reset it. And then we're going to try to do this really big banked corner. The trick is there's a hole in the middle. So you got to fly and you got to stick the land in. We lost the rear bumper, but I will take it. We have a ton of speed, which means we can do another jump. 100 miles per hour-ish, flying through the air and it's... Not going to live through this, but we can take a look at the other zone over here. This is the terrain types zone. See, this is mud. If you're upside down in the mud, you're not going to be able to drive. If you're right side up in a car like this, you can drive a little bit. <laughs> very, very little bit. Especially with the automatic transmission just shifting all over the place. But eventually, you can get out of the mud and then go to the sand, which will have a little... 
little bit of the same problem, but it's definitely better. And we also got the water here, which, yeah, you can't drive through that because it gets deep. And we don't have the car that can do that. But you see, there are just a bunch of different types of terrain you can try driving over. And it's on an incline, so you kind of see how it performs on both a downhill and an uphill. And then at the end, we even have some numbers, which are pretty cool, because you can see how far can you go up where the car will still hold its position. Oh, wow. And look at that. The car is able to hold at almost a 60 degree angle. That's actually surprising. I didn't expect it to hold there, but cool. All right, backing out. Car can still drive. Yeah, it's got some dents and bumps, but who doesn't have some of those? Here's a dumb idea. Let's try cutting across the rocks and seeing what happens. That worked spectacularly well for some reason? Does that mean we could drive across the rocks? Let's find out. No way. <laughs> that is exactly what I expected, but I had to try it. We had to give it a shot and make sure. So that's going to do it for the hills of terrain. And in addition to the big puddle of water and big mud puddle you saw earlier, there's some other big areas of terrain like you see off in the distance. You got some rocks, you got a grass one, and then probably the most fun one is straight ahead, and that is the ice one. So on this one, you just kind of get your car onto it, hopefully sliding, and then you can slide across. Unfortunately, we weren't sliding as much as I was hoping, but you can see, yeah, ice means no traction at all. We can spin the wheels all day and barely move. What we need is all-wheel drive with some studded tires. That would get us going, but a race car, he don't got any traction in ice. What are you doing? Well, we're getting off of the ice, and we're going to go into the air. This is supposed to be like a banked corner you could drive onto, and I say, I don't care. We're going to crash into it and fly. That's the proper way to use a banked corner if you want to crash the car. And will it be able to drive after this? I think it will. Let's see. Very slowly. Come on, car. Downshift. Yes, there you go. So over here, we got another new zone. This is the city zone. And driving this car, it ain't working really. So let's get a nice, normal car that you would drive around the city. A V8 version of the Bruckle Moonhawk. That is a very, very ordinary vehicle. I feel like when I say that, people think it's going to be like sarcastic or something. Like, oh yes, let me just drive my Lamborghini. No, dude, this is actually just a normal vehicle. <laughs> There's no weird, oh, yeah, it's actually fast. No, it's a big V8, but it's a slow V8 because it's old American V8. Anyways, as you saw, you can enter some of the buildings and then you can climb up to the top. It's kind of like a parking garage, but very, very unsafe because there's no barriers or anything. So if you go a little too fast, you just fall out of the building and crash and die. Yeah, this is not a safe city. I don't know who approved this, but it's ridiculous. Oh, come on now. That ain't right. That should not have happened. I got stuck on the block. All right. So we're finally on the roof. And when you get to the roof, you can jump across from building to building. Like I will try to demonstrate, but we need to make sure we have as much room as possible to get up to speed because it's not that fast of a car. So here we go. Flooring it hard. Is it going to make it? Come on. Easy jump. And then here's the hard one, please. Close enough. It still drives even though the car is like falling off of the frame. And there's another jump we made. Well, rear drive shaft is broken, but it did an admiral job. And look at the roof. Dang, this thing looks so much faster than normal with the slope like that. But it's actually much slower considering it can't drive at all. We can cook the engine, though, if we wanted to, which I just did. I guess I wanted to. All right, next up, how about another normal city car, but this time a little bit special, 2.0 GTZ version of the Covet. And all we're going to use this for is to get back down to the ground level. We're going to use the big ramp, and we're going to try to make it a little bit smoother. How? I don't really know. We're going to go slow. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that kind of worked. Yeah, because the roof took the damage and not the car. I'm a genius after all. My brain frightens me. Like, what if it got full control over my body? Who knows what would happen? All right, so we can drive around the city a little bit. You see, there are some buildings that you can't go into. They're just big blocks, basically. I like the ones that are like car parks, though, where you can drive into them. Here's actually a really nice view of the city. Very, very basic looking, but perfect for grid map. And now... It's time to fly. Almost 100 miles per hour gets us some real nice airtime and a landing that is 
enough to mostly break the car. It's not really going to drive. We can struggle, but that's kind of pointless. So instead of struggling, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the damage. And then we can go ahead and change cars. So what have we not driven? How about a Bruckle Legrand? And we're going to get the Detect Special. So what exactly are we going to detect? The changes in the update! Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I should mention, we are really focusing on just a small number of really big changes, but there are a lot of changes in this update, but there are things that are small bug fixes and improvements, and I think you guys would be much more interested in seeing fine details of the big changes. Like, for example, the physics-based rendering system. So before, when you colored a car, you could basically do brightness and chrominess and that was it. Now you can do so much more to really fine-tune the way the car looks. So to start things off, you have a slider for how metallic the car is. Then you have the roughness. So you can make it really shiny or really dull looking. You also have the clear coat, so you can have no clear coat at all, and then it's really looking dull. And if you want it to look even duller, well, just increase and decrease the clear coat roughness, except that actually doesn't do anything because there is no clear coat. So you put back the clear coat, then you do that. Like, there's so many sliders here, I don't even exactly know how to achieve what I want, but I feel like no matter what I want the vehicle to look like, I can achieve that. And another nice thing is a lot of the props have been improved as well to look a lot nicer. One of them, for example, that's always kind of looked uh, pretty, you know, I was going to try to be polite, but you know what, let's just say it's always kind of looked pretty hideous is the large roller. It was always just like this big shiny chunk and stuff. Now it actually looks like a metal material. It has a nice like texture to it and stuff and it looks so much better. And they did that for a bunch of the props as well as the vehicles and stuff. They have all those new color features. It's great. And then how about that pigeon? There's a race version of the pigeon. There's a drag version, a rock dove version, the van plus like these all have four wheels, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed that. These are four wheeled versions of the pigeon. I mentioned it earlier. We're going to try out the race version a little bit. What is the camera doing? What have I done to the camera? There we go. That was funny. So with the race version of the pigeon, it's surprisingly fast. And look at this surprisingly stable. This pigeon looks like McDonald's. I mean, come on. When you got a red and yellow vehicle, what else are you going to possibly think of besides, yes, this is Ronald McDonald's race car to make children happy. I'm not the only one who thinks that, right? I can't be. Anyways, over here we have the suspension test zone. So here we have a bunch of tests we can do. Some of them pretty easy. We can even do it in a pigeon and some of them, yeah, well, they'll be a lot harder. I do want to give the pigeon a chance to shine. So here's another one it should be able to do. Although it probably will get some air time. Oh, yep. We're flying a little. Then it levels out and look at how smooth it is. Oh, we're flying again. It's not smooth. I lied, but we made it. That was amazing. And just because it has four wheels, it does not mean you still can't flip it over. As you just saw, I still managed to flip it over. No problem. Anyways, we can do a couple more of these. You know, switch it off here. Like, this is kind of neat, actually. Because this one... Is that cobblestone thing that you would see in Italy, I guess? But now it's in the suspension test zone because sure, why not? It makes sense. Okay, this will not be pretty probably. Here we go. Come on, pigeon. Ow, oof, ow, oof. Come on, pigeon. Come on, pigeon. Oh my goodness. I'm tearing it apart. Oil pan damaged. Hey, that's another new thing, by the way, is the oil simulation. So you can actually run out of oil in your car, which... Yeah, that's bad. Cars need oil. Even the people who have Teslas, they need oil. The funny thing is, you see Teslas like, no oil for the license plate. I'm like, really then? What lubricates the vehicle? Yeah, you still got oil in there, buddy. You just don't use gasoline. You got another difference. Anyways, four-wheel pigeon, a little bit broken, okay? Completely broken. I was trying to soften the blow, but yeah, it's not driving at all. So let's go with the Rock Dove. This one has the ground clearance. It can do the suspension test. And for some reason, it also has nitrous because, sure, why not? All right, so here we go. Going back for round two. This time, we ain't going to get wrecked, and we're going to go on the harder one. I think uh, the one to the right is even worse than the one I just did. So here we go. Oh, actually, it's you know, it's funny. The pigeon is so small. Look, you can make this easy. Oh, look how easy this is. <laughs> really, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to split between the two, so it really tests the flex of the suspension, which this doesn't have that much of. It doesn't have that much of. No, but it has enough. It works. Oh, no, it doesn't work so well here, though. It got shook. Come on, go, go, go. 
Oh man, that is violent. That was really violent for how slow we were going. Like, look at how much shaking we got at 15 miles per hour with a little bit of slow mo. Check this out 20 miles per hour now. The whole back is lifting up into the air, it's jiggling apart. This will destroy a vehicle, it feels like, soon enough. So, let's get the poor guy out of here. And you just got all kinds of different things you can test the suspension on. And if you try to test it like this, you just, just don't. Don't do that. That's not how you're supposed to test the suspension, you idiot. Come on. Get through. Get through. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so proud of you. So that's going to do it for the suspension zone. We also have another drag strip. This is the second drag strip that's been added to the game. It kind of has the thing that tells you how fast you drove, but for some reason it doesn't seem to work exactly. The good news is you can still race the AI. You just gotta decide yourself who was faster, you or them. And I think this would be a great chance to test which is faster, a drag pigeon or a drag widgeon. So we're gonna give the AI the darter, which is the drag widgeon. And then for my car, obviously we want the drag pigeon. So let's go ahead and find him in the vehicle selector. There he is. And we are gonna answer the question, which one is faster? If I had to guess, I would say the widgeon. It looks more aerodynamic, and aerodynamics are pretty important in a drag race. So here we go. All right, Pigeon, doing pretty good. Nice, decent launch. How is the widgeon? Ooh, ooh, I'm pulling away, but that doesn't mean the Pigeon's faster. I think if I win by about that much, it just means the AI is worse at drag racing than I am. And as you see, though, it's not telling us the results. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Anyways, the pigeon is done. He's sliding on his side. So let's go ahead and bring it back. And we're going to swap the two cars. And I'm going to go based on what feels faster between the pigeon and the widgeon. And I don't actually need to give them a pigeon, but what the heck? Why not? And I guarantee you sometime in the future, or maybe even in this video, I might have already done it. I'm going to call a pigeon a widgeon, or I'm going to call a widgeon a pigeon. The names are just too similar. So here we go. Nitrous on, just like the pigeon. Launch feels pretty similar. I just think this one pulls a little bit harder though. It just feels like it and oh look at the comparison there. That tells you all you need to know. The widget is much, much faster because the AI was not nearly that far away when the cars were reversed. Widget is superior in every way, just like I said earlier. Now, let's go flying. Beautiful flight. How about a beautiful crash? Yes. Ooh, fire. Fire bad. Driver should get out of car. Nah, too lazy to go on foot. We're going to just take a look at the damage from here. And then we'll reset it to the drag strip. And then we're going to go explore a different area. So over on the right, we have the big tubes. And we're going to go inside of the big tube and try to drive through it. Now the widget, not the ideal vehicle for this. Not even a good choice to do this. Yep. Here we are using the widget for some reason. So the first thing you need to do is get inside of it as gently as possible. And that actually worked, but the suspension's messed up. But we're not done yet because we need to get through that hole. And we have just barely made it. Widget, you are impressing the heck out of me. Especially considering it still only has three wheels. This is not a four-wheeled vehicle, and that's not the way you're supposed to do that. But you know what? I don't have much steering. Not really much at all after that previous impact. In fact, now, there's actually no steering at all. I mean, if I really, really wanted to, I could try to drive out of here simply by gassing and braking and hoping it turns in the right direction naturally. But yeah, that sounds like a pain. So let's not do that. And let's instead just grab a car that should be good for this, like the ESBR. It's good because it's electric, which means it can actually drive upside down if we need to. And there are basically two ways you can approach this next section. You very easily drive it up nice and safely, or you just floor it and see what happens. So that's flooring it, and that's what happens. Now, I guess I should also show you the very nice and safe way of doing it, too, because you probably don't believe me. You're like, YBR, you don't know how to do it safely. You're just making that up. Oh, yeah? Well, watch this as I slide all over the place. That is safety. There is safety in drifting. So what you do, you go up a little bit, and then you just kind of cruise over like so. And you thought I couldn't do it. Maybe. I don't actually know what you're thinking. I like to pretend I do, but for all I know, you could be asleep watching this and missing this awesome maneuver. That is exactly what you want to do. This, however, is not. Because there's a wall there, and that wall will stop your car. But I had so much momentum, I wasn't going to stop. Go. 
go, go. Nope, nope, no, it's not gonna go. All right, fresh car, that'll go. And on this one, you gotta do like half a loop and get to the next zone or something like that. Here's the easy way. You just get moving, doing some loops, and then just steer hard, and you are through. So we are now officially done with the half pipe zone. Again, we didn't show off everything, but you get the idea. We're gonna head over to the handling zone. So here's the handling test. Yes, that handling is good. That is very good handle. Don't think how that test is normally supposed to go, but we at least got a pretty good looking outcome, I would say. And we have a car that actually still drives enough to go back to the handling section and do it for real instead of just, you know, jumping off the edge like that. So we have a couple of different things over here. First, we have a skid pad, which we're slowly, fastly making our way to. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're here. And the idea with this is just steer hard to the left and you see how many Gs can you pull. Although right now we're going to drift it because the car doesn't really handle properly. It's so beat up because of bad drivers like me. But it works sort of for that in the current situation. It would work better if we had a fresh car, but that's okay. We also have another one, which is more of like a road handling course. So it's just a road. It's pretty flat there's a little bit of a banking to it but it's not like a racetrack or anything like that it's more of just a normal road that you might experience while driving and you see here even with a messed up car it can do this terribly oh we're sliding out of control no way all right well let's go ahead and just wreck this guy so i can get a car that actually can drive in a straight line there we go that'll maybe stop the car let's see no it just slows it down it can still slightly move but it's pretty bad. So, let's go ahead and swap this out. We'll get another car that has a nice, good grip. In fact, we'll go all out with the hill climb version. And there are a couple other things over here that we can drive on. Probably for this one, the best thing I can do is just give you an aerial view. So, real quickly, whoop, we're in the air. So, you see, there's the circle. There's the thing I drove on to the right of the circle. There's this thing here, which has a little bit of elevation to it. Then we have these two mostly flat areas. There's a couple of small bumps there. And we are going outside of the handling area. And, well, that is most of the handling area, although we still got the big hill we tested the medium hill but you gotta test the big hill as well and this time we're gonna do it very very realistically but i'm gonna get a car that doesn't handle good so we can properly test this so let's go with the burnside drag edition perfect and if i did that dumb thing where i put a random clip at the start of the video i would be like we're gonna test this car's capabilities we're gonna see can it climb this hill the answer Oh, heck yes it can! The real question is, what happens when it lands? Find out in this video. But that's what happens. You get damage just as you'd expect. But ooh, that I did not see coming. I did not see the little spinning maneuver. Unfortunately, can't really see the car because it's upside down, so we gotta try to fix it like so! Okay, that's overkill. Haha! -ha! The double trick flip! completely pointless but hey you get a better look at the damage and that is what was important who have we not driven still oh i know i haven't driven the h series so give me a big old box van and if we look over to our left you will see that is the sky curve zone although this is not the right vehicle for that so we're not going to attempt it but you can at least see what the course looks like and you've seen me do the sky curve course that was on the old version of grid map previously i'm assuming this is a different course i should mention so let's go ahead and do this this is the dump it into a hole for some reason zone this zone does not have that many things but it's great for dumping a car into a hole now the real fun part is trying to get out of here we're on fire trying to do it it's not quite gonna happen we need something a little bit faster so let's just go uh let's get all-wheel drive in this thing but not crazy fast how about the rally version that's crazy fast ybr yeah but the extra ground clearance sounds nice all right so here we go we can get out of this by accelerating in a circle very very fast and then just inching our way up little by little and then it's actually nice and smooth and by the way, if you're wondering, this is called the Walls of Death Zone. So it has the wall that goes underground, and then there's also the above ground wall, which we are also going to try out. we got to find the entrance, though. Somewhere there's an entrance to it. There it is. Be very, very careful. And then floor it. Should not have floored it, but too late. Can't stop me. Induction system damaged. That is going to slow us down a bit, but not enough. Here we go. So this is really cool. You know, just the fact that you could do this in real life is what's cool about it. Someday, I'm going to do this in real life. I don't know why, but I will. 
And technically, you could just climb forever, I guess. Like, there's nothing that's really going to stop you except for the fact that, yeah, eventually you do run out of road. And on this one, when you run out of road, it's a little bit more violent. You're going to fly out and crash like so. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I know most of this one was focused on grid map, but that truly is the part that I was the most excited about. So I'm glad that I really got to show this off in the most detail. Until next time, this has been YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how many new things they add in every single update. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.